As stewards of our parish, your safety is our topmost concern. We have coordinated with medical experts and have taken measures to follow disinfection procedures that goes beyond and above the minimum guidelines as set by the Philippine authorities. Our process involves a hospital-grade solution of sodium hypochlorite in concentrations as used in U.S. hospitals' operating rooms that is recommended by the United States Center for Disease Control, FDA, and the EPA. In addition to this practice, we've also incorporated high-intensity ultraviolet light disinfection and fogging machines of the church's most commonly touched accessed and used areas. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, these new guidelines are put in place to keep you safe. So be at peace as you celebrate the Holy Eucharist with us. Dear sisters and brothers, as restriction of mass attendance is eased, we would like to share with you the guidelines and safety procedures in attending mass at Santuario de San Antonio Parish. In compliance with the IATF rules and regulations, parishioners with pre-existing chronic conditions appear to be at a higher risk of developing complications and are therefore discouraged from going to church. At the main driveway, Present your QR code and a valid ID to verify your identity and reservation while maintaining social distance at all times. A sticker with your seat number will be given to you after verification. Please attach it on the upper left side of your chest. Sanitize your hands before entering the church. Always wear your face mask. If your temperature is 37.6 Celsius and above, you will not be allowed to enter the church and will be asked to go home. You may enter the church through the middle door at the main driveway only. Instead of the traditional offertory, collection boxes are placed near the entrance of the church. Ushers will check the sticker bearing your seat number and will direct you to your seat. Avoid touching the holy water. Once you reach your pew, please check the number before sitting down. Parishioners are not allowed to change seats. There will be no holding of hands at the Our Father. There will be no handshakes at the offering of peace. A bow can already be a good sign of peace. During communion, parishioners who wish to receive the host are required to fall in line per row and maintain social distancing. Maintain a distance of one meter when receiving the host from the priest. After receiving the host, move at least two meters away from the priest before consuming the host. Put your mask back on immediately after consuming the host and return to your seat without delay. To go to the restroom, use the exit door at the back of the church. When returning to church, do the same entry procedure using the entrance door at the main driveway. After the Mass, follow directional signs to go to the exit door at the back of the church while observing social distancing. While inside the church, avoid touching the pews images of saints, or anything else inside the church. Leave the church compound promptly after Mass to give time for the sanitation ministry to disinfect and sanitize the church for the next Mass. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, these new guidelines are put in place to keep you safe So be at peace as you celebrate the Holy Eucharist with us.
Good morning. We welcome you as we celebrate the Eucharist today, the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for the intentions requested by our parishioners and the intentions posted on live stream Masses. Our presider is Father Amado Barankel of the Order of Friars Minor. Please join us in singing the entrance hymn. Welcome to our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's Sunday, we are reminded to be wise to be always ready to prepare to meet the Lord. And so for the many occasions when we have been lax in living our faith, especially, let us ask the Lord for His grace and mercy so as to be worthy to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
gathering all the mass intentions that you have requested and posted at the live stream, let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversities so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care because she makes her own rounds seeking those worthy of her and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. O Lord, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep so that you may not grieve like the rest, who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To honor the gospel, please rise. Stay awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day your Lord will come. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we have just celebrated the past days, the All Saints Day and All Souls Day. And soon we will be in two weeks' time, we will begin a new season, the season of Advent. And so in today's Gospel, we are being reminded of this great reality, of this truth, that there is an end to everything that we hold dear, be it our lives, be it our loved ones, be it our possessions, all this as an end, as we say in God's time. And so the gospel today reminds us to be wise. To be wise in the way that we live our life. What it is that we value most. Is preparing for God's coming part of our priorities. Or are we just occupied in pursuing things of this world? Fame, success, and so on and so forth. These are all good, of course. But in terms of value, 
What is it that we value most? Where is our heart, in other words? Are we wise enough to know that these things are all temporary? In the past days, the gospel spoke about being stewards. We are all stewards of God's blessings, whatever it is that we possess, the wealth, our health, and so on and so forth. All of these are only lent to us. We are only stewards. God is the source of everything. He is the sole owner. And we are enjoined to be his wise servants. Today the Lord Jesus made use of the parable of this wise, the ten virgins, five wise and five, five foolish ones. The foolish ones were all busy in the worldly cares. This is in this image today. They use about the wedding. You know, in the Mediterranean context, in the Palestine, where I came from, I've been in Libya more than 20 years. A wedding takes a week and is almost the celebration, especially the, the final one. In the midnight, you won't be able to sleep with the noise, with the, uh, all kinds of uh, instruments that they play. And so they have to have lamps. They need to have light. And so, how important it is to carry the lamp, the lighted lamp in this context. And here, we see how foolish will it be for you to go without any lamp in the middle of the night. And this is actually about our life with God. We don't know when God comes into us. We don't know when he will come for his glorious coming. No one knows. But he comes every day to us. He comes when we celebrate the Mass. He comes to take our life. No one knows. All that is asked of us is to be wise, to be ready always. We are all here. It is beautiful to see you coming already to celebrate the Mass. A sign of your desire, a sign of wisdom that you value not just what you see, what you touch, but especially the things that you don't know, the things that we call faith, our life with God. My dear friends, blessed are we, blessed are you, when God comes and when you're, you are ready with your lighted lamp, your lamp, the oil is the life that you're living. How have you loved? How have you loved God above all? And how have you cared for others who need you? How have you shared with others? How have you forgiven others? How have you loved and cared for those who are difficult to take care or to love? These are things that make us wise. If we are able to look beyond the pain or the suffering that we encounter when we try to love those unlovable, 
when we try to help others and yet we are still misunderstood. It hurts. But my dear friend, this is where we become wise in the eyes of God when we are able to endure it for love of God. Let us love with the heart of Jesus. That is wisdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten, begotten Son of God, God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated, seated at the right hand, hand of the Father. Father. He, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have, will have no end. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. prophets. I, believe I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, church. I confess, I confess one, one baptism for the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, sins and, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the, the life of the world, world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Father that as we await the glorious coming of His beloved Son, we may be filled with His wisdom in order to live out the gospel values in every moment of our lives. And so with confidence we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer, that the leaders of the church may truly become wise in their words and actions so that their decisions may promote human flourishing, especially among the poor and the marginalized, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer, that our political and civil leaders may value the kingdom of God as the greatest treasure and think of heaven as a true home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That consecrated persons who have abandoned everything for the sake of the kingdom may, by their joyful living of the vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, show their brothers and sisters the primacy of God's kingdom over everything else, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who despair in life those who are burdened by weakness and sin, and those who are discouraged and pessimistic about the future, may regain trust in God who will wipe away every tear from their eyes, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the COVID-19 pandemic come to a swift resolution with the recovery of the sick, the protection of those who have been exposed, for experts to find a cure, for government and health authorities to take the appropriate steps to halt its spread, and that we, the faithful, act responsibly for the good of all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who grieve for their departed ones may be strengthened by their hope in the life hereafter, and that those who have gone ahead of us may share the joy of the heavenly banquet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, I lift you all these supplications. I lift you all the unspoken intentions of these your sons and daughters gathered here, especially the suffering victims of the recent typhoon. Loving Father, fill us with your spirit so that we may overcome our weaknesses and offer you our lives of faithful service. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
you have something to offer, just drop it on the box. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care but even possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise us in joyful celebration. We acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Brother Rick, our apostolic administrator, and all the clergy and religious. Remember, all our brothers and sisters have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially all the souls we command in this Mass, including the lost and forgotten souls. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saints Francis and Claire of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to the whole church the world over we now pray to the father to the words our lord jesus has taught us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace and brother.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but Lord, only say the say word, the word and, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. Him. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. body of Christ.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity be endured in those your heavenly powers entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for parish announcements. We once again appeal to your kind hearts for support to the victims of Typhoon Rolly. You may donate via cash or check to the parish office or through our online or mobile payment channels. Donations will be coursed through our sister parish, St. Pius X in Virac, Catanduanes. Please see poster for details or call the parish office. We can now visit our loved ones at the crypt at Santuario de San Antonio. In compliance with IATF regulations, prevent the spread of COVID-19, we will accommodate 20 people at a time inside the crypt. Thank you. I'm glad to see you all coming back. It's good to see that the church is almost occupied. <laughs> and, uh, just as the Lord Jesus, don't be afraid, just be careful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of God be upon you. The blessing of the Father and the Son. And may the spirit of love, the spirit of peace, be with you all your days. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our mass has been offered. Let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Have a great day.
Lift your voice to the world. 